Voice of Congo point net news on real time. I started by asking, sorry for being late, you know. The traffic was very bad. And uh, there was this broken truck on the road. And I don't actually know what broke it, if I can say so, but it was broken, that was for sure. Uh, so I'll get quickly to my uh, subject. Well, subject. How can the Congolese students of the diaspora in Pogoria contribute to the welfare of our nation? And that's the DRC. Before I get there, before we even think about you guys contributing to something, I believe everyone is a Congolese, or we, not everyone, okay. Sorry for those who are not Congolese, but it was like more meant for them. But still can use it and adapt it to your respective countries. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, why would, should we in the first place? Because uh, talking about the Congolese people, Congolese, uh, ah, it's Congolese, we always have this thing in our mind that uh, why should we even contribute to our country? Because us being here in the first place, they, our country never contributed to anything for us being here. And the same comment that I received from people, as I posted this on our, on our uh, Facebook page, and people asking why would the students contribute to the, any welfare if there is any for the DRC, what the DRC never done anything for them to be here. That's where I'm gonna get started. By the I'd like to say this. I'm not being like a, I'm not trying to separate people from their nations or trying to separate people inside South Africa and anything, but we have to understand that we have to have what we call patriotism at heart. Just as the South African did. That's exactly why we have this country, that's why we sit here. I will start with the person that got me involved in all this. It's of course Roger. When he approached me, it was at a Vit University, I, I, I remember, it was Vit University. When he was sitting next to me and he was speaking to me, I could hardly tell that he was a Congolese. That has to say that uh, no matter what we do, we have to stick to our origins. And that will never change. I'll start by my, I'll go back to myself as well. I have this look like people saying that I'm South African. I used to be in KwaZulu Natal. You know in KwaZulu Natal, that's where you have the uh, biggest population of Zulu people here. And uh, then when I get to a hospital or somewhere, at the first look at, when people look at me, they seem to think that yes, I'm a South African. When I get to sit, or maybe when they get to question me, or ask me, and only then they get to find out that I'm not a South African, and they get quickly upset, you see? So, why am I bringing up this example? Just to make you understand that uh, no, whether we like it or not, we have to stick to our rules. I'm just trying to explain you why you have to contribute first, before you even get to uh, thinking about uh, contributing. And uh, eventually, there was this case last Friday. I have been invited, it was in Rivonia, in St. John. And there was this, uh, this law, lawyer firm. There was two lawyers, one South African and uh, one from Uganda, I believe. And uh, they called uh, all the refugees and foreigners exactly. It was because they wanted to go and stand against the new immigration law uh, at the Con Court, at the Con Constitution Court. And as they were speaking, they wanted to make us understand first what the implications of the new laws. And when we got to read them, okay, he was explaining to us. And uh, if I may ask, is there any, do you have, do you have engineer or engineers be among us here? Oh, okay, I can see there's so many of them. And then you the hood. Because when the, 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 the lawyer was like telling us all the careers that are uh, being allowed to foreigners. Okay, I'm a journalist, we're not there. It was mostly about things like moon scientists, you know, stuff like that, marine, whatever. So it's only things that, it, that are not available to anyone. You have, need to have great brains. So why I'm bringing this up is just to make you understand that back if it was in our country, maybe it was gonna be easier for us to do easy jobs. Like the guys may say, no, it is no job like you sitting on TV and just having a drink with somebody, people filming you, and then you get paid for that. No, 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 not for the foreigners, that's for the South Africa. <laughs> so that's just to say that we, uh, whether we like it or not, we'll never be under the question South Africa. They love us, they welcome them as in, our, in, in their country, but they like, can never make us the same because they've worked hard to get where they are. So should we. Now, I'll get to 
we contribute. I believe that you are okay with me now that we really need to contribute to our country. What do you think? What I've just spoken about, is it appealing to you or you still not convinced that you need to contribute? Ah, okay, that's good. Okay, now, how to contribute? Okay, to contribute, yes, but how? But uh, before we get to know how to contribute, we need to know first what does our country need? What does the DRC need? That's the big problem. And uh, people around here, with, I don't know what you guys think, but I, my personal opinion, we have a problem of leadership. Who's against that? Congolese, do you believe that we have really, the only problem is leadership? Because come on, we have it all. Resources, natural resources and everything, but it's only a problem of leadership. I think there needs to be a change of attitude from the people as well. Then you see on my side. If you see oh. on my side, you can see where I'm going. Uh, we have a problem of leadership, definitely. Uh, definitely because, uh, uh, and when I want to really be specific, when I'm thinking about leadership, I'm not thinking about politicians. I'll try and differentiate that to you. What is a leader? A leader is someone who does things for the sake of the people. He leads the mass for the sake of the mass. But a politician is someone who does things for his sake because he has his own agenda, because he wanna be voted. A leader does things because he wants the welfare of the people. But a politician does things because he wants something from the people, and that is vote. He wants vote. That's why he, he go to do anything just to get you to vote him. So I just want you to Notice the difference that I'm talking about leaders here. We may have politicians in our country, but we, we don't have real leaders. They're both on top, politicians and leaders. They're on top there. They're there leading the people, speaking to the people. But as I said, what's the, why are they doing that? A leader does it because he wants the welfare of the people, but a politician does it because he wants his own good. Not necessarily to make money in a democratic uh, pay advance in a democracy like maybe or, or the USA. A politician can't really make a lot of money by being a politician. I mean, by being a president, you don't. They, you know how much you're getting paid, but at least you need your votes and you need power. Still, you need something from the people. So, being a politician doesn't mean that you're necessarily a leader. But then, some of you are asking themselves, okay, if it's a matter of leadership, why is he? Uh, speaking to us, the student, why wouldn't he go and speak to the leaders there in Congo? But then that's the problem, it's because it's from here that people start getting leaders. It's at your level that you'd get uh, mentored to become leaders. No one else. You don't get, you, you, people don't get born leaders, you become leaders. And most of the time it's at this level that you get to, uh, of course, uh, understand that, that uh, you have to become a leader. Now, let's get to exactly how to do that. Then it's a question even myself cannot answer. Why? Because it's so wide. And uh, with me being late, a few times to explain myself, I actually cannot do that. But every single person, every single of you in its field or her field knows exactly what to do. That's where I'm going to link leadership and entrepreneurship. In my country, we have people who always want to be employed. I believe that many of you are ask you, okay, once you're done with your studies, why would you, why would you go back to Congo and study? And, and I mean work there. And you're going to tell me there's no jobs there. That's exactly where the problem is. Why don't we create those jobs? And that's where the entrepreneurship thing comes along. For those who are in Johannesburg or in Vitz last month, I think, there was uh, this uh, speaker, Mr. Young. He has it all. He made it young. He has a lot of shares in a lot of big companies. He made things happen. And uh, his companies or company or whatever he does is expanding even in the Middle East now. But he has this thing around that he's a Congolese and he needed to get started in the, the DRC. 
let's face it, he's not going to make a lot of money in the DRC. Because he's in the, what you call, in those chat, those chat things like WhatsApp and everything. Come on, do you believe, even when we, we go and see on the, the internet, like, let's say, internet or the Twitter, you see that less Congolese, especially those in the in DRC, use them. Because it's not accessible to everyone. But he, 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 he accepts, he wants to do it just because he wants his country to go forward. So if I may tell you or may advise you as to how you can contribute to our country, to the welfare of our country, I'll say, get a job here, yeah, of course. Hey, I'm here. I'm sure you're asking yourself, okay, he's telling us to go, why is he here? I, I didn't say that to contribute to the welfare of the DRC, you have to go to the DRC. No, you have to make it happen here. Yeah. There's always this story that comes back in my mind, and even when I was talking, I was thinking about this topic, uh, back in the days, just after the Second World War, the U.S. had power uh, over Japan. They invaded Japan, and uh, the ruler of, the, of Japan was actually a U.S. Uh, administrator. And uh, they deported a lot of, not, I can't say they deported because it's from their country, but they took away a lot of young Japanese, and the same thing was happening in Germany. Why? Because the American noticed that the Japanese and the, 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 the German were very intelligent people. They took them away, sent them to U.S. schools so they can study there and eventually contribute to the U.S. Uh, welfare, if I can say so. And that's how we get to see people like Einstein and everything. He made most of his invention or whatever his contribution to was in the U.S., but he's a German. But then, what happened was, after those people finished the school, first of all, I'll, get, I'll want to get there. Those people, they, they were really good, the Japanese and the German in the US, not because they were more intelligent than the American, or because they were more dedicated. That is, they really wanted to do it because they were out of the country. And that's exactly why we bothered them, the students, the very same students who are doing the very same thing that you do in Congo. Why? Because they have their parents right next to them. They're not really motivated. But I believe, if you notice, or if you don't know, let me tell you that as Congolese here, yeah, we perform very well in most of the universities. I don't have the figures exactly, but we do perform very well. And that's not because we're more clever than South Africans. No, it's just because we're more devoted, if I can say. We really want to make things happen. We know that we have family that's looking at us, or we're far from home. We're not just here to play around. So that makes us better already. We can really achieve something. And all those Japanese, they were performing better than the Americans. And then, after a while, they started going back to the country. No one sent them. Just imagine you in the US, just as we are here, uh, economically more advanced country than Japan. Back then, Japan wasn't even the third or second uh, world biggest economy in the world. No, it was just right back there. It, just, it was just destroyed by the world. The Second World War, there's two bombs that been, two city bombed by, with atomic bombs and everything, so it was destroyed. But they went back their country, and uh, only after a decade, Japan was the second biggest economy in the world, let alone Germany. It was rebuilt in a split of a second. Who rebuilt that? I don't, I don't, I don't believe that it was the German that was left there. No, it's the same people that went outside. Because what was happening is those powers that, I mean, the US and uh, Europe, wherever took over this country, they were doing their best to keep this country down, especially Germany, to split in two. You had the Russia and the, the, the Soviet Union taking one part and the US taking another part, and there were some measures they were not allowed to do some activities so that they were not going to grow economically in so, in so many ways. But they did it. Why? Because the people that went outside acquired something and they came back to their country and made it whatever it is. That's what I want to bring to you also, Congolese. Yeah. We've learned a lot from here. We saw how things happen here. Yeah. We are more motivated. We have a lot of, a lot, except some things that we think are very uh, commonplace, are very trivial or obvious, as I can say. Back home, it's not the case. The way we use high tech gadgets over here, <coughs> no, there, I don't know if there's people who go there all the time and come back. People are not uh, 24 hours on Facebook or why? Because you will have problem charging your phone in the first place. There's no electricity. You see, so there's a lot of a lot of things like that. They, they quite 
And even we've noticed that when you, you go in the political side, you notice that what we see really strange and you say, no, this cannot happen in my country. There they made. Why? Because they just they put a swimming pool in the middle of the city, of the capital city, and people are made. Swimming pool with lights. But here we see it everywhere. Why? Because they've been kept in a certain way by the lead, politician or leaders so that they cannot. But we are outside and we know now what is happening. And only us, we more aware of the situation. That's the real dire situation. We really need to do something. So whatever knowledge you have, put it at work here. You really, eventually, before you go back there, you're not going to go back empty headed because there's no money over there. You make no money, yeah? Maybe you can start up a company. That's where I want more to settle. There's no jobs over there. We need to, to make jobs happen. We need to start companies in whatever field you are. Engineer or I don't know. OK, I'll start saying about what I'm doing, what I've done, because I haven't done yet big things for my country, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. There's this thing, for those who know Voice of Congo, uh, uh, are, you, uh, are you on our page as well? No. But we do have a page, or a Facebook page. And there's this thing that, and once again, I noticed that we really, as Congolese, we really kept behind because of lack of knowledge, lack of education. Every single day, I use, uh, I, I, I came up with this idea of, we call it, ce jour dans l'histoire, that's in French. In English, it means this day in uh, history. And every single day, I tell people about what happened back in the days, or something that really happened that's marked the history of our country. And these are things, like things that we thought that everybody knew about. People didn't even know about that. So even the history of our country, and I remember on the 14th of July, people were more waiting on me to say something about the French Revolution. And that's all they knew about. But they didn't know that on the very same day there was another big event that happened in our country. So we know about the French Revolution, we know about the Soweto uprising, and we know about the US independence, but we don't know about, let's say, Kim Pavita. Who does know about it? Kim Pavita. We do. Okay. I didn't know about that day. Sorry? I didn't know about the 14th. No, 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 that's the very same day. I'm just giving an example. Okay. But she does it, right? Uh, in the, uh, how many was? 15 people here, we have only one person, no. Right? But if I say, who knows Jean Dark? <laughs> Jean Dark? Yeah. Everyone. Everyone knows. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Kim Papita is there, she's done almost the same thing as Jean Dark did. So just that. We know Jean Dark. <laughs> So that's my contribution to my country. I tell people about history. At least we know things that happen, and we get to know how to lead our, because you surely know that in order to do well in the future, you need to know at least your past. I'm giving an example of my case. That's my contribution. And eventually, it's not sufficient or enough or big, but I'm only giving that example because at least I'm doing something. So you should ask yourself the question, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing for your country? Whether you're an engineer, whether you're a scientist or whatever, acquire whatever you can acquire here, yeah? but think in a way or another to try and help the country. When I spoke to some people over here, they said, no, I will go back to Congo when Congo will be fine. But who's going to make it fine? Who's going to make it fine? No one but us. We need to do something about it. There was really a lot to talk about, but just that uh, uh, I made it worse myself, and I, I really uh, I came a bit late. But then again, I believe that as a we are, uh, you guys got to understand a little bit of what I was about to say, or what I tried to say. I believe that the case, you got my case. So I saw humbly retired, and I say thank you for your patience. And I'll speak to the truck driver and tell him to do that next time <laughs> so that this won't happen again. Thank you. Oh, that's uh, that, uh, the voice of Como in English, although the content is French. But then on the website, again, it's actually the news agency. 
We are based in London, but eventually I'm here. I'm the chief of uh, the chief editor. I work in the, all the print press of that particular agency. There's a, eventually, there's also a, uh, the what you call audiovisual, if I can call it so. Uh, there's a lot of things. So it's basically it's Voice of Congo. So you can seek for it. So it's if I like it, uh, am I gonna get those? Yeah, you definitely get it. I do it every day, even though I didn't do it for the last two days because I had to prepare for this. I knew that I was coming to speak to the students of the University of Britain. I said, that's not a game. If you're not prepared, <laughs> you might get very well humiliated. <laughs> so, yeah, but I basically do it every day. Yeah, so every day you'll get that. you get that. More questions? No questions will mean that you didn't either understand me or I didn't say stuff. a few times and it's, it's a question that I cannot answer myself because I'm not, I don't, I'm not uh, an expert in all the fields but eventually I gave what I think was uh, is kind of common to all these fields no matter which field you are whether you're a journalist whether you're a scientist uh, an engineer a medical doctor no matter the case you really need to make because there's no jobs at all there in Congo don't think that's even if you do astronomy, go back there and you get a job as a, a, a street, uh, I don't know, whatever. Because there's no job, actually, there's no job. So we need to make that happen. I believe that if you, know, you did astronomy and you go back there and maybe uh, launch a satellite or something, you get people, you give people jobs. That's what I want, because I was trying to, I said that, I raised that point because of the time and because it's common to all those fields. I hope I made myself clear. Available. Or any further discussions on uh, whatsoever topic that you feel uh, you're itching to you know, to discuss, I think he's he's been available for me when I wanted you know, to talk to him. So I think that he'll also be available to you. I think uh, it's at his liberty you can uh, give yeah, me you can, some you can, uh, details. You know, you want to put the, the the our website, our Facebook page, and eventually our yeah, anyway, you can even, the number? Yeah, you can even uh, yes, so get all of me on uh, if you want with my cell phone number. It's cell phone not a problem. You can just call, as call long as you promise me that you'll contribute to the welfare of Congo, then. <laughs> <laughs> I know one, I know one. Uh, yeah, can you spread to our Facebook? Yes, I'm one of the administrators, I believe so, yes. Because what I post comes out with the voice of Congo, so I believe I'm one of the administrators. But I don't get to, to administrate it actually, I only post things over there. There's people that are meant to do that, people whose job is to do that. Actually we're a big agency and uh, a lot of people know about us. We have, we have, we have hundreds of thousands of people on the so <laughs> oh, uh, in journalism, yes, we do, we do, we do, we do. Just in journalism. Nah, we're news agency, what else do you want? Well, obviously, you guys have some money that needs to be um, managed and things like that, so you know, well, I get... To manage the, the... The money, I mean, it's a, it's a company, right? Yes. Yes, so yeah. you're not just drawing journalism. <laughs> obviously, there's someone who's in charge of the HR department. Someone. Yeah, as, as I said, um, we based in the UK. Oh, so I believe that if there's HR or if we do have one, because I've never seen him, if we do have one, he is most probably in the UK. Okay. The only person that I'm, I'm uh, always in contact with is the one who sends me the money. 
That's the only concern. <laughs> so, but we do have, no, we, we really have, and we expand even here, we'll be opening our offices over here. Uh, and uh, it's so far, and as I was saying, we always have, our country is so wonderful. The only problem where we've got, the only country where we have a problem right now is our own country. We were, we were trying there and they gave us our time and uh, luckily our case wasn't, we still in, it's still pending. For those who knows new, who read news about the country lately, about, it was about 60 or 60 some, 60 old uh, news agency that has been uh, suspended. Yeah, they're in the DRC, but we are not among them. So our case is still pending, but we also want it to, like here we can cooperate, but there we cannot operate. So it's just wonderful. goes a very long way. It has to do with much more than just bringing resources and creating jobs. Uh, I, would, I would like to tell a story that happened to me uh, this week. I went to the embassy to collect my passport and I stood there for over three hours and never got it. And I, I was furious because I missed classes and I asked to speak to the Congolese Chancellor. When I spoke to him, he told me that it was a mistake. I wasn't supposed to receive the SMS to go collect my passport. I don't know if you know how it works. Uh, that's no, that's not the question. Uh, my question is... That's our embassy, embassy you're talking about. Our embassy, the Congolese embassy. If we have to be the ones to contribute to the welfare of the country, we also have to be the ones who represent our country well outside. But things like this are, uh, let's say, beyond our control, right? Yeah, yeah. So then how do we fix things like this? This is like, as it was again a matter of time, I was going to talk about that too. Uh, there's these things that we have to know. We always tend, that's why I even raised this thing up by saying that people always get, when you say that, you say, I'm not going to go back to Congo when things will be fine, but who's going to make it fine there? We have to understand one thing. When those Japanese were going back to their respective countries, the German, their country didn't have any democracy. The country was ruined financially. There was nothing. They were making things happen. We have to admit it. Our country, things are terrible right now. We don't, I'm not going to go into political, but it's just a mess. Everything is a mess. And even here, and I know the case you're talking about. They don't even welcome people. I've, I've, it happened to me going with a friend. They, at the same embassy, the friend was a colonel of uh, the SAPS, we got there, our embassy, I'm a Congolese, but I got blocked in, on, on the door, but he, he could come in. <laughs> you see that the kind of things happen. So, but we have to change all that. We have to change it. We have to find a way. We have to find a way. I don't know how, but I said what I could say. You guys also have to find your way. It's just a mess. But if we sit and think that, no, no, you know what, I'm not going back in that country. You know, they treat us bad. I went there. Like, I, I'm a person that doesn't like uh, load shading or power cut or stuff like that. And every time I go maybe to my country and I see, I don't, I don't even feel like going back. There's mosquitoes there, they, they bite you and everything. But it's my country, I have to do something and kill those mosquitoes. That's what I'm trying to say. We have to try and contribute. So are you trying to say that this is beyond our control? It's not beyond. It's not beyond. If we think, if we think, if we just apply our mind, we find a way. It's not beyond. It's not beyond. We, there's things that we can do. The Germans really got their country out of that mess. And today it's the fifth, uh, one of the best democracies in the world, the fifth uh, uh, biggest economy in the world. How, to, how did they do it? They're not more, no, no, they're not more smarter than us. We, we're really smart as well. You see, it's just that they thought, they have them, they, they apply their mind. So we can do the same. So, you want us to go to someone and force them to take something that we must do for them? Force it. Like we have to force our way. Even if someone you go there and people are like, no, you can't come through here. Are you thinking about your passports? No, no. I'm talking about like if you have to go back to our country and create opportunities for jobs and stuff. Yeah. And let's say you get there with your company and you build your own reputation <coughs> through, I don't know, uh, you graduated, you build your own company, and you get there and they tell you, no, you can't. 
Uh, uh, you have to like pay something. Tomorrow, like, tomorrow tomorrow is a mess in the country. I don't think that if you go back there and want to start up a company, they'll refuse that to you. No, no. They, will, they will let you do that. But Maybe they will see. charge you a little bit more, but especially if you're a Congolese. But, <laughs> but, but what about your agency? It's not, yeah. it's not doing anything. It's, the name is the voice of Congo, right? Yes. But it's not. So you're talking about us operating. Oh, no, eventually we'll get to do that. Just that they gave us, well, what I was trying to say is that they gave us more hard time than they, they did in, in, in other countries. I don't know what they, we call it red tape or. Yeah, you that's know. my point. What if they give you that hard time? That now what's happening to your agency? Yeah, but we, we're trying our best. We have, we have to because we want to contribute. And you know, a big agency, there's a lot of towns. What if the company is starting to ask them They won't even pay attention to you, I'm sure. They just start to think you're not even asking you any question. Maybe that's the problem with us, because we be that's why they're looking at us. If we were smaller, I don't think a lot of people that go there, they, they, they build those, those guest houses. No one, no, no one just pay attention to them. So you are, you have a small company that you understand. I, I, I advise you to just try. They're not gonna give you. People do that. The thing is, don't go there and ask for jobs. They're not gonna give it to you. But if you go there and create jobs, as long as you're paying your tax, it's more money in the minister's pocket. Believe me. But uh, as a conclusion, uh, I myself and uh, Shadia, we had certain things that we'd like to present to you just for your, uh, your own like, introspection. Questions that you can ask yourself uh, as, as a Congolese, as a Congolese student, as uh, a Congolese person. I'll just flash the questions on the, on the slide and then you'll see them. It's a matter of introspection. Something you can ask yourself and find an answer to. Yes. Yeah, these, two, these two questions, sometimes I ask myself very often and you can do that too. And yes, uh, something else. That uh, Jenny wanted to share with you. Just take your time and consume that. Uh, I think that that's a very powerful, powerful, powerful statement. Deep. <laughs> I mean, he, he made it. Yes, he's the one. But the way he spelled it is the... Oh, so I got it wrong. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's, that's the kind of contribution we're talking about, you see? <laughs> now that's contributing. That's very interesting. Uh, you can, uh, if you want to have a copy of this, I believe you can just approach <laughs> It's copyright. <laughs> yes, it's copyright. <laughs> yeah, just okay. uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much for making it here. And let's remember our forthcoming events. Thank you for the support. Let's keep this going. Uh, and yes, see you guys at our next event, the 20th, the 20th of September, community event. Let's give back something to, uh, to this one. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, sorry, guys, before we go. Uh, one more event on the 13th of September, which is next week Saturday. UPI is organizing a soccer tournament, so we'd like the ERC to be represented. So whoever is interested in playing for the team, please talk to Roger after all. And thanks again, thanks to Mr. Eric, thanks to all of you guys. See you around, and I wish you all the best with the studies. of Congo.net news on real time.